you, thank you, Joel. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I now call the 79th annual meeting of the members of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation to order. If there are no objections, I will appoint Mr. Steve Miner of the law firm Tysinger Vance to conduct our business session. Steve? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for being here. One of the hallmarks of electric cooperatives is these annual meetings where the member consumers get to elect their directors. They're directors who live in the same communities that you live in and who take electric service from this, on the same terms and conditions as you do. I know the board and the management greatly appreciate your presence here and your continued support. There are a few formal matters which we need to take care of prior to hearing the reports of the president and the chairman, attending to any new business, and uh, going on to the prize drawings. First, I'd like to appoint Mr. Jim Roberts to serve as our parliamentarian. Mr. Roberts will be using Roberts' rules of order quite aptly. Second, you were given an agenda that look like this when you registered today, and unless there is an objection, we will use this agenda as the order of the day. Hearing no objection, the agenda is adopted. Next, I would ask your corporate secretary, Ms. Lynn Price, to give us the secretary's report on notice of the meeting and quorum. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, the official notice of this meeting contained in the August issue of Jimco News was mailed to 181,049 member customers on July 13, 2018. Proof of mailing has been signed by the appropriate authorities and will be included as a, as a part of the minutes of this meeting. Our registrars have notified me that 984 member customers have been officially registered to participate in this meeting tonight. This number, Mr. Chairman, exceeds the quorum to conduct official business of the cooperative. Thank you. Thank you for that report and establishing that we have complied with the bylaws on notice of the meeting and the attendance of a quorum. The next formality we need to take care of is action on the minutes of last year's meeting. We actually have a transcript of the meeting here, and it is uh, contained in the headquarters. You can look at it at any time during office hours. And since it is a transcript, a um, motion to waive the reading of the minutes and approve them as on file at the co-op would be in order. Do I have such a motion? We have a motion and we have a second uh, in order to adopt the minutes as transcribed. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor of the motion to adopt the minutes, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, say no. The ayes have it and the minutes are adopted. It's now time on the agenda for the auditor's report, and I'll ask Mr. Terry McMichael, your independent auditor, to come to the podium to deliver that report. Thank you, Steve. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to review the financial report of your cooperative. The September 2018 issue of Jimco News included the financial statements of your cooperative which I would like to summarize now. Your cooperative has assets totaling approximately $1 billion. The majority of that is represented by utility plant. Utility plant is the poles, wires, transformers, and other equipment used to bring electricity to your homes and businesses. Your utility plant increased approximately $18 million during the year. This increase is the result of meeting your needs and providing the service to new members and improvements to the system 
to assure reliable services to you, the members. Your equity increased by approximately $28.5 million, resulting from the difference between revenues, less expenses from the current year, and the amount of $37.5 million, reduced by the return of capital credits to you, the members, in the amount of $9 million. The strength of your balance sheet and the results of the operation for the current year assured continued compliance with the requirements of your bankers. You can be proud from a financial perspective that you have a healthy cooperative. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. I'll now ask Mr. Otis Jones, your board chairman, to provide his remarks. Mr. Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Well, good evening again. On behalf of your board of directors who are seated behind me, I want to welcome you to the 79th Jackson EMC annual meeting. We always enjoy having so many Jackson EMC members here with us. We sincerely appreciate your interest and participation in the business of this cooperative that operates to serve you. If you look around, you're likely to see some new faces here tonight. That's because Jackson EMC is growing. In fact, Jackson, Barra, and Lumpkin counties are among the top 100 fastest growing counties in the nation. That growth has added nearly 4,000 meters to our distribution system over the past 12 months, bringing the total meters that we serve to more than 228,500. Based on meters served, we are the second largest cooperative in the nation. In the past year, Jackson EMC members used 5 billion, that's with a B, 5 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. That's enough electricity to power a refrigerator in every U.S. household for one month. While we are adding new residential members, last year we welcomed 400 additional commercial and industrial members. Their membership added 13,000 kilowatts of competitive commercial and industrial load to our distribution system. Among those is a new GE Hair appliance distribution facility in commerce that will use more than 3.3 million kilowatt hours of electricity each year. This growth continues to require expansion and improvements to our distribution network. In the past 12 months, your cooperative has invested $35 million in the distribution network that serves you. While we added 138 miles of energized line last year to serve new members, most of that investment was spent to make your power supply even more reliable. We built two new substations. Potter's Crossing is a new substation in Jefferson built to serve the growth along Highway 124. Webb's Creek is a new substation in Banks County on Highway 141, which will help serve the growth in the Banks Crossing area. It will connect to a new transmission line, increasing the reliability for our members. Reliability is also behind the ongoing grid automation project and the installation of 48 more automated switches this year. They help us get the lights back on faster when an outage occurs. We now have more than 250 of these on our electric distribution network and plan to have more than 300 of these switches operating by the end of next year. We're also investing in new energy resources. We are pleased the Plant Vogel expansion is moving forward because we believe in nuclear power 
as a reliable source of clean, carbon-free electric generation that will benefit the region far into the future. We negotiated protections for you against future cost increases. In 2017, Jackson EMC members received 68 million kilowatt hours of renewable electricity through our partnership with Green Power. 19 million kilowatt hours of that was generated through solar power. That was enough to totally power 1,300 of your homes last year. In 2021, we'll add another 13 million kilowatt hours of solar powered generated each year from a new project currently under construction in middle and south Georgia. In addition to the supply of renewable energy we're working to, cre we're working to create for you, we have 120 members participating in our rooftop solar program, producing solar power on their own homes. These members are not only supplying their own homes with solar power, but any additional power is shared in the energy mix and may be powering your home as well. But making sure you have the power you need is only half the job. As board members, it's our responsibility to make sure your cooperative is efficiently run. And one measure of efficiency, efficiency is what you pay for your electricity. Jackson EMC members pay 15% less than people receiving electricity from almost any other country. For you, that's an average of nearly $300 that I'm holding up right here. $300 a year that your family can spend on other things that you need. Thank you. Another measure of efficiency is margin refunds. As owners of a not-for-profit cooperative, you're eligible to receive a portion of the funds left over at the end of the year after all the cooperative's expenses are paid. That money is called margin refunds, and your board is proud to be able to return it to you. Last December, eligible Jackson EMC members received $9 million in margin refunds. This year, your board of directors is pleased to announce that this December, we'll mail $10 million in refunds to members who received, thank you, amen. $10 million in refunds to members who received service in 1990, 1991, and or 2017. When that refund is mailed this December, Jackson EMC will have returned $135 million to our members since we were founded in 1938. Along with the other members of your cooperative's board of directors, I want to tell you that we are honored to play a role in providing the reasonably priced, high quality electric service we know you depend on. That concludes my report. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now, if you would, please help me welcome Jackson EMC's president and CEO, Mr. Chip Jenkins. Chip. Thank you, Otis. I got hung up on the chair back there. Did y'all see that? Microphone in the back, it all grabbed me. I uh, think it's just going to be one of those kind of nights where we've got this rain and weather, but nonetheless, I look forward to annual meeting all year, you know, the food, the, the music, the opportunity to spend time with everybody who's 
who's brave enough to come out in weather like this. And I, I sure do appreciate y'all braving the weather and being here for the event tonight. And the nice thing is, with the kind of smaller crowd, you got a better chance of winning a prize. How about that? All right. And so I'm curious, you know, Otis had $300 that he was holding up in his hands. What's, what's everybody going to do with their $300? And my, my birthday's coming up, so y'all think about that. Otis... Otis just spoke to you about how Jackson EMC is doing as a business, and now I'd like to spend just a few minutes talking to you about how we're doing in, in the communities that we, we serve. You know, at, at cooperatives, business and communities go hand in hand. You know, we spend time investing in our communities and in the communities we serve because, like you, we, we live in this community, we call this community home, and we want to see it prosper. And so 80 years ago, this is our 79th annual meeting, 80 years ago at, at a meeting not unlike the one we're having here tonight, a, a group of people, uh, a lot like us, got together to form Jackson EMC. And what a great day that was. You know, at that time they needed electricity. And so the community came together to form this cooperative and make our community better. You know, Jackson EMC was created to serve the community and we've been doing it ever since. So concern for community is no surprise, is one of the seven principles that govern all cooperatives. And these, these values outline how we operate. Concern for community is, is an obligation for us. It's, it's not a choice, it's an obligation. And, and it means that we take our commitment to investing in this community and in the communities that you live in and the communities that we serve very, very seriously. You know, John F. Kennedy famously said, a rising tide lifts all boats, and that, that's true. A strong community benefits everyone. It benefits all of us. And, and that's important because it's, it's important to you, it's important to us. You know, as, as members, we're all working together to make our community stronger and better and brighter and, and investing in the bright minds of our future leaders is foundational to, to our community and to community development. And so one way we do this is through our commitment to supporting education. You know, this will mark the fourth year for our Bright Ideas grant program. That, that grant program was, was funded, uh, it is supported it, and it goes out to all of our middle school classrooms across, across our service territory to support projects in those classrooms. If you've got middle schoolers, if your kids or grandkids are middle schoolers, that Bright Ideas program goes out and helps fund innovative projects there. You know, this year, we've been around for, for about 80 years, but our quality beef show has been around for 49 of those 80 years. And that, that beef show, if you're not aware of it, it's one where through animal husbandry, our students learn good stewardship, leadership, and discipline. And you can imagine that if it's been around for almost 50 years, that the program has touched hundreds and thousands of student leaders, including our very own Ag Commissioner, Gary Black. So you know if it's a, if it's a program that's producing leaders like that, it's gonna continue to produce those kind of leaders for our future, and that's why we're proud to support it. You know, the support of your cooperative uh, supports students from across our service territory to learn about our nation's capital as well, up in Washington, D.C. And this year, our Washington Youth Tour delegates that we chose from among our membership and from our, long, our local high schools joined students from across Georgia and others from around the nation to learn about our country and also strengthen their leadership skills. And, and, and this isn't to mention just all of the other partnerships with local schools that we have to help with, with mentoring young kids, teaching them electrical safety through electrical safety demonstrations, career days, science fairs, and, and many, many other things. We are involved and engaged in education and we also support many nonprofits and many local events in our community on an annual basis, all of those that you're familiar with where we give monetary support. We also donate our time 
and we support those charities through our time and investment. We, we're not just here to cheer from the sidelines. Instead, we roll up our sleeves as a co-op. We and our employees do the work that needs to be done to make our community a better place to live and work through that investment in those, in those nonprofits. But our deep-rooted investment doesn't just stop there. You know, we're sponsors behind many other community activities and events. Everything from theater productions in, in local schools and communities to food pantries to help those in need. We raise money to, to, to walk at the Relay for Life and the March of Dimes events. We support Habitat for Humanity and Boys and Girls Clubs and Boys and Girls Scouts, and I could go on. You'll see our floats and Christmas parades and our employees riding on those floats to engage in the community and even tables full of Jackson EMC employees at our local chamber events. And so why would we do all of that? Why do we do those things and take that time and invest that energy? Because we know that's the type of co-op that you would like. You want an engaged co-op, an involved co-op, a co-op that cares. Because you're our member owners and that's what you want from us. That's what you want us to be. I mean, you're here tonight. You're engaged with us. It's, it's showing that support for your co-op and that's what you want back from us in terms of support for the community. Now those are all great programs, but the power of our people, our employees here is important too. Um, I, I said before that we don't, we don't cheer from the sidelines and my, my parents taught me that from an, from an early age, the power of volunteerism to get out there and get involved. You know, every year my family was involved and, and huge supporters of our local Special Olympics. And if, if you've never been to one of those, I encourage you to go. It is a great, great organization. And I, I started when I was about 10 years old, um, and my parents would let me do everything at those events from, from lend a hand moving the starting blocks at the races to handing out medals at the end to the winners. And it was a big deal to me as a 10-year-old. I got to see how powerful it was to take an active role in making community better, to making your community a happier and healthier place to live, and it, and it left a lasting impression on me. And, and it was a lot of fun, too, so. It's that same type of spirit that Jackson EMC employees embrace. It's why they are encouraged to volunteer for causes that matter most to them and matter most to you. For Chris June, an Army veteran who is now a lineman at Jackson EMC. For him, that cause is assisting veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. And I saw a lot of veterans in this crowd tonight. You know how important that is. Amen. Chris founded a nonprofit that trains service dogs to ease anxiety in veterans with P PTSD. And, and I couldn't be prouder of him. That's one example. Take. Melanie Berryman, another example, who works out of our niece office as district secretary. You know, Melanie has a unique gift for connecting with teen mothers. And after 20 years of service at Jackson EMC and service to those organizations, she's mentored more than 100 teen moms, helping them reach their personal goals like high school graduation. And we create community ambassadors here for life. Even our retired employees that, that go off and stay engaged in our community, we're equally as proud of them. Take, take Benny Bagwell, who retired after 46 years of service as our engineering and operations coordinator over in Gainesville. You know, he became involved in building new habitat for some osprey that were nesting on Lake Lanier's bowling bridge. And through Benny's leadership, a whole bunch of people got involved in that project and created a sustainable, long-term habitat for those birds. Tim Sweat, our recently retired senior director of job training and safety, engaged his many coworkers to start a motorcycle ride that would benefit the American Cancer Society. Tim and many others who helped have raised more than $53,000 for that worthy cause, and now they're off helping others in the community to hold similar events. Amen. And I can go on. There, there are many of our employees in civic clubs and chambers and economic development authorities. 
Uh, others serves as mentors and volunteers and coaches. And I'm sure over the years, some of our employees have even coached your kids or, or grandkids because we support that type of effort. And that makes me proud. I hope it makes you proud, proud of the community spirit that we're showing here at your cooperative. And I hope it makes you proud of the impact that we're making in your community. Now, as a, as a cooperative, you know, and I've said it over and over again, we're fundamentally connected here to the communities that we serve. And we're, we're blessed to have so many great employees with the big hearts that you just saw on those screens who are investing countless hours of service. At Jackson EMC, our community outreach stretches far beyond our local service territory. And you may not know that. You may not realize how far our reach goes out, but it does. We extend our reach out to the global community as well. This year, some of our linemen traveled to Bolivia to bring power to a community that still was there waiting and had been waiting for a long time for electricity. Now, I could stand up here and tell you about it, but I tell you, the, the words of the four linemen who made that journey to Bolivia do a much better job, and we have a great video of that, which I'd like to share with you right now. Jackson EMC is proud to partner with NRECA International in helping developing countries get electricity to their more remote areas. It is at the heart of the cooperative experience. Jackson got together with uh, Cobb, Carroll, Flint, and Cowie de Fayette and put together a team of 11 linemen to go uh, to Bolivia to power up two villages. It was a little bit difficult, the challenges, because the uh, very high altitude is between 13 to 14,000 feet above sea level. And if you've never been in that, I mean, you try to walk 50 foot and, and you're just out of breath. I mean, you can't. And everything was walking pole to pole, so it was real hard terrain, real mountainous country. It was a lot harder than I expected it to be. The altitude was, uh, we thought we had uh, a job we weren't going to be able to handle. <laughs> You put 11 linemen that have been doing this together. Everybody has a different way of doing things, so it was a little hectic the first day. Yeah, I was, I was really impressed. I mean, you get, a, you get a group of linemen that's never, ever worked with each other at all, you know, and then we come together and we build that much line. I mean, that, that is really something else. Uh, everybody knew the job that had to be done, and everybody worked together and got it done. But it, it was primitive work, you know. It was back to the roots of line work. Everything was, was by hand. You had to kind of figure things out, you know, how to do things that we're used to doing with top of the line equipment. Yes, local villagers uh, were uh, very happy to see us. Uh, they, had, they had been fighting for many years to get power up to their villages, and uh, they were also very willing to jump in and help. One of the strongest memories I have is of a woman carrying about a two-year-old maybe on her back and pulling wire up the side of a mountain uh, that we were breathing hard just to walk up. There was one gentleman, he was a 72-year-old man, and uh, he lived up there all of his life farming, and he worked circles around everybody. And everywhere he went, he ran. The whole experience is very humbling to see how they live without power. Uh, little, very little huts, no floors. Their beds were made of, you know, grass, uh, laying on a dirt floor. It's, uh, it's this is gonna change their lives. We was there when the lights come on. I mean, everybody cheered and was happy, you know, and I mean, they've been waiting for that for 10 years. So when the project was over with, they had a little ceremony. They gave everybody a lay of flowers, and uh, they sprinkled confetti over our heads. They, they gave us all the uh, alpaca toboggans. What we did getting that power to those villages is really going to make a difference in those people's lives. You know, they're going to be able to improve their communities and grow. And, and be successful. We're very proud of the work that our guys did in Bolivia in really challenging conditions. Uh, that work is gonna make a significant difference in the lives of the people, these two villages that they brought electricity to. It feels good to be part of a company that makes a difference. Wow. I bet you didn't know Jackson EMC's mission work to reach all the way to Bolivia but I'm glad that you do, and I hope it makes you as proud as it makes me. And, and, and on behalf of those linemen and the rest of the employees, thank you for that round of applause. Well deserved. So, so I've spoken a lot tonight, and I appreciate you sticking with me about how proud I am about our employees and what they do in the community. And, and, and just grant me one more minute to talk about you guys and what you're bringing, because your generosity is, is not to be forgotten tonight. 
and, and all of you that are participating in our Operation Roundup program, I want you to know that you've invested more than $13 million back into our community through that program. And those are important programs, a lot of the ones that I mentioned here tonight. And your generosity through rounding up your bill just a few cents has added up to that $13 million and had a huge impact. So I want you to give yourselves a round of applause as well. Now, I'm, I'm going to wrap up by get us on to the prize drawings and just by thanking you all for being here tonight and, like I said, being involved and, and engaged in your cooperative because participation in this meeting tonight, as hard as it is and the rain and the weather, and it's a little bit warm, uh, participation in this meeting is what makes a cooperative a cooperative, being here and being engaged. So enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the prize drawing. Stick around for that grand prize of $3,000 worth of appliances. I can't wait to meet the lucky winner. Y'all, please be safe traveling home. The roads are wet tonight, so be extra careful. And please come back next year. I'm thinking we're going to have better weather. Thank y'all. Thank you. Those Thanks, two sir. reports tell me a couple of things about Jackson EMC. Number one, you have great leadership. And number two, you, the owners, of this cooperative have an awful lot to be proud of. Not only are you, your, is your company providing electric service uh, efficiently and economically, but they are incredibly involved in the community and, and sincerely care about the communities they serve. That goes from the top uh, executive down to the every employee. And so give yourselves a round of applause. That's a great report. It's now time on the agenda for the election of directors. The bylaws provide two ways for candidates for the board of directors to be nominated. One way is to be nominated by the nominating committee. The other way is by a written petition signed by at least 50 members. I will now call on Ms. Carol Zaremba to report on the nominations made by the nominating committee. Good evening, everyone. The nominating committee of the Jackson Electric Membership Corporation met at the Cooperative Headquarters Office, 850 Commerce Road, Jefferson, Georgia, at 9 a.m. February 20th, 2018. In accordance with the bylaws of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation, we wish to place in nomination the following members for consideration by the membership at the meeting of the members of Jackson Electric Membership Corporation to be held on Thursday, September 27, 2018 and voted on at said meeting to serve for a three-year term beginning on that date. Banks County, John Mitchell, Jackson County, Bill Carpenter, Madison County, Rodney Chandler, signed Steve Bates, Jonathan Logans, Clay McDaniel, Lydia McClure, Mamie Outler, Mark Sizemore, Dean Stringer, Alicia Williams, Carol Zaremba. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Saremba. I will also report that this year there were no nominations made by petition. Article 2, Section 5.2 of your bylaws provides that when there is only one candidate for a seat on the Board of Directors, the election is conducted by voice vote at this meeting. So I'd now like to ask for a motion to um, elect Mr. Mitchell, Carpenter, and Chandler by voice vote. Do I have such a motion? We have a motion and we have a second. All in favor of the motion to elect Mr. Mitchell, Carpenter, and Chandler by voice vote, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. The ayes have it. I would like the record to reflect that each of the nominees have been elected for a three-year term as director. 
There is no unfinished business from last year's meeting, so I'll ask if anyone has any new business to bring before the meeting before we adjourn and have the prize drawings. Is there any new business? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn would be in order. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor say aye. aye. We are, oh, I got a call for no. Any opposed? No? The ayes have it. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your presence here today. Good luck with the prize drawings, and please be safe on your drive home. You're welcome.